friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making another All Dyes No Stamps card using the Lawn Fawn Honeycomb Backdrop and the Meadow Backdrop Portrait. I've pulled out some different scraps of cardstock from my stash. I'm going to be using Sticky Note, Storm Cloud, and the Pearlescent Vellum, all from Lawn Fawn. I'm going to use the Sticky Note to do the body of the bees. Storm cloud for the black bits that are going to show through from behind and the pearlescent vellum for the wings. I've also got an extra cardstock panel of the sticky note and a card base of sticky note. And I'm going to color these with some distress oxide inks starting with squeezed lemonade. So I'm just going to bring that color in from the outside edges and leave the center plain. Now you may notice from the thumbnail of this video that it actually doesn't feature the honeycomb backdrop and we'll get to that later on, but I wanted to show you the entire process of this card even though I did have to pivot and do something different just because First of all, you might want to try my original card idea. And um, secondly, um, I just wanted to show you that sometimes cards don't work out the way you planned, but you can still make a really great card. So I'm gonna show the whole process and um, explain to you what happened in a little bit. But I'm adding in now my second color, which is mustard seed. And I'm gonna do that for both panels as well. And then I just went back and blended a little bit with that squeeze lemonade to um, bridge the gap between that and the plain sticky note cardstock. So I just went over that center part again to smooth that out. And um, once I have that done on both of those panels, I'm going to darken things up even further. And this time I'm going to bring in fossilized amber which has just a little bit more of a golden tone than the mustard seed. If you only have one of these inks, I don't think you have to use both, but I just wanted like a gradual darkening around the edges. I'm trying to create the look of honey. I'm also going to take some vintage photo, which is brown, but I'm going to only use just the tiniest little bit on the very edges to really drive home that golden look. And I did not do this on the card base because originally my idea was to die cut the honeycomb backdrop and create a shaker card. So I was going to put a piece of acetate um, on underneath that and then pop that up over the card base. So the frame of that honeycomb backdrop would have covered the edges of the card base. So that's why I didn't bother bringing in that color from the outside edges on that part, only on this main focal panel. And then I'm going to press some of that mustard seed ink onto an acrylic block and do some splatter detail just to get a little bit more movement and interest on the background. I did this on the card front as well, but I only showed it on the panel because I didn't want to keep repeating the same process over and over. And then I also wanted to have some gold flecks. So I went with this really rich, almost coppery tone of the Gansai Tambi Starry Colors. And I'm gonna splatter that all over both of these panels as well. And this is gonna look so pretty when you tip it into the light because it just has that really pearlescent sheen to it. Um, and I think that really added a lot to that background. So I'm gonna set those panels aside to dry, and in the meantime, I want to also add a little bit more color and interest to my bees. This time I'm only using the mustard seed and bringing that color in from the two sides, just to add a little bit more definition to the edges. I didn't wanna to go too dark with the bees because I didn't want them to blend into that background. I wanted them to be lighter and brighter than the honey in the honeycomb. Um, so I'm just adding that one shade, like I said, and then I'll set those aside. And I also wanted to add a bit more definition to the bodies. So I cut those out of the storm cloud rather than black so that I could add a bit more definition to the edges and just give it a little extra pop. 
So I'm taking some black soot distress oxide ink now and also just adding it to the left and the right to each of those parts. The larger part is gonna go behind the face and then the kind of like a fingernail shaped piece is gonna go down behind the body to reveal the stripes of the bee. So I'm just adding those to each of them, making sure I do the front side and just using my fingernail to kind of hold them in place so they don't move around too much on that mat. And then I have one more panel that I'm going to color again with the same yellow shades, um, starting with the uh, squeeze lemonade again. This time I'm not going to leave any sticky note cardstock showing at all because this is going to be for my sentiment and I wanted that to also stand out against the background as well. So I wanted this one to be darker. I went lighter with the bees and darker with the sentiment. So I added in the mustard seed next and then I'm going to bring in the fossilized amber. And on this one, I'm going to bring in more of that vintage photo as well, but I'll be a lot more heavy handed with that. I wanted it to be really rich and vibrant and to give it that golden hue. I think that the uh, vintage photo combined with that fossilized amber just looks really golden and beautiful. So um, I'm going to just add that in. And this is a little bit bigger than I actually needed, but I just wanted to be able to decide where exactly I wanted to cut that sentiment out from. I'm actually going to go back again with that vintage photo and just make it a little bit richer, bring it up a little bit higher on that panel to make sure that I get some of that on that sentiment and uh, just blend that out smoothly once again. This time I'm not going to splatter, but I am going to use one of my script scripty words dies. I'm going to use the scripty sweet and I'll die cut that out of that cardstock. So while everything is still drying, I'm going to start building my bees. I'm just going to do one of these on camera so that you can see how to do it, but um, the rest of them I just did exactly the same. I zoomed in there a little bit more for you guys so you could see a little bit closer what I'm doing, but basically I'm just adding a little bit of glue to the black part so that it won't come through the eyes, kind of staying away from those eyes so that glue doesn't come up through. And then I tried to do it on the body in the middle, but I realized that it's actually easier to turn these bees over and assemble them from the backside. Um, I'm going to fix that now. And then all of the rest of the bees, I actually did both pieces uh, from the back. It was much easier to do it that way. So I did get a little bit of glue showing through there because I had done it uh, front ways first. So I just use the little pin that comes in my glue bottle to scrape that glue out and then I'll add those pearlescent vellum wings to the back of the bee and there you go. They're super super cute. So even though this is an all dyes, no stamps card, I think it's okay to stamp part of the sentiment. I'm going to heat emboss mine using the new High Five stamp set. And I am just prepping that storm cloud cardstock first with my rabbit hole designs anti-static powder tool. And then I'm inking that up with Versamark ink. And I did ink that up twice to make sure I had a nice impression. I'm going to coat that with some Lawn Fawn white embossing powder. This is my favorite white embossing powder. It's really nice and detailed. And then I'm going to heat my heat gun off to the side for maybe 30 seconds to a minute to get it nice and hot. And then I'll bring that to the back of the cardstock first and then to the front. That just helps eliminate some of the warping and melt that powder until it's glossy and white. And then I'm going to pop my card base in my Misty so I can finish off the inside. And I'm going to stamp some more images and a sentiment from Hive 5. And I'm using Sunflower ink this time. And I'm going to stamp that down a bunch of times because this ink does dry back a little bit. And I wanted to make sure that the yellow really stands out. I didn't want it to fade so that you couldn't really read it. So I stamped that a total of three times. And then I'm going to set that aside. 
And now I'm gonna take that honeycomb backdrop and die cut that out of the focal panel that I had created, or at least that was my intention. I ran that through my die cutting machine about 10 times. I tried a metal shim, I tried cardstock shims, I tried both. And the last time I actually used so much force that the panel kind of jumped and it got off of alignment so it wasn't usable and um, I think I just happened to get a faulty die. It happens sometimes in the manufacturing process. It's not a big deal. I've already contacted Lawn Fawn. They're gonna send me a new one. No big deal at all. But I did need to finish this card. So I had to pivot and think quick and I decided to grab the honeycomb stencil and just add that to my card front since I already had added all of the splatter and detail to that card front intending it to show through the shaker card um, I just decided to embellish that even further and just use that as the front of my card so I'm going back to those two darkest shades of ink the um, vintage photo and the fossilized amber and I'm just picking different parts of that stencil to add here and there to create a little more interest on that card front. Since all I've got going on there is the sentiment and a couple of bees, I wanted there to be a little bit more going on in the background to just um, kind of pull your eye around the scene. So I think this stencil is a really fun one to add and I just added like different levels of that ink as well like sometimes I pushed a little bit harder on that ink blending tool sometimes I use softer pressure so I could get like um, kind of almost like a ghost effect in some places and then I grabbed a dry paper towel and just buffed over that so that the distress oxide ink didn't hide that uh, gold shimmer that I had put down so I also die cut that sweet die the scripty sweet out of the storm cloud cardstock I did it two times out of that just to add a little bit more lift to that part of the sentiment and also to create a drop shadow so for two levels of that I'm going to line that up perfectly just to give me that um, extra lift like I said and then when I add the yellow one over top I'm going to offset that one so it gives me a little bit of a drop shadow. It's just gonna help that sentiment stand out even more on that background since it's yellow on yellow. So you can see there, I'm just gonna line it up just slightly to the left and high so that it creates that little shadow underneath. And then I'll add some more liquid glue to the back of that I'm using my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue because it has that super fine nozzle so I can get behind in all of those little areas. And then I will kind of pop that into place where I think it will look good in the center of the card. The rest of the sentiment that I heat embossed, I die cut that using one of the everyday sentiment banners. I'm going to trim off the end that I don't need and kind of tuck that back behind the top of the T just to integrate it a little bit more into the rest of the sentiment. So once I know where I'm going to place that, I can add my liquid glue and then just line that right back up where I had it. And then I'll grab my bees and kind of lay those out and figure out where I want them to go. I have five of them. So I'm going to put two toward the top part of the card and three toward the bottom kind of. And I just want to turn them in different directions and make sure they're not all kind of looking exactly the same just kind of clustered around that sentiment. So once I'm happy with how they're looking, I'll add some liquid glue to the back and pop them back down into place. And I think they look super duper cute. So this card didn't turn out exactly like I'd planned, but I still think it turned out pretty cute in the end. And like I said, I wanted to show you guys that sometimes you have to pivot and that's okay and don't let it cause you to panic or anything or you might have a moment of panic I sure did um, especially because I had a meeting I had to get to right after this so I had to think very quickly on my feet but um, yeah you can always save a card and still come out with something that is really cute so yeah 
So that is going to be my card for today. I will lift that up so you can see all of that sparkle and shine and the shimmer from that pearlescent vellum. There's another peek at the inside as well. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you ring that notification bell if you always want to be alerted whenever I post a new video. All of the products I use will be listed and linked in the description bar below in case you'd like to pick up anything for yourself. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.